Hey Duck fans, Kurt here. Well, this week we're talking with Paris Moore. Now, Paris came to Oregon from Southern California in 2002. He spent five years in Eugene, roaming the secondary as both a cornerback and a safety, playing a role in both the secondary rotation and on special teams. We welcome him now to the Fish Duck one-on-one -on -one video podcast. How you doing, Paris? Doing pretty good, doing pretty good at the <laughs> o for the O Nation. All, already with the O, man, we love that. Well, we, we know you're a big passion Duck fan. Everyone who goes there comes away just loving the Ducks, but uh, you were actually a fan before you uh, you ended up at, at Oregon. So you're from Southern California, so what was it that made you a Duck fan and what made you decide to become a Duck amongst the other schools you were looking at? Basically, my uncle, he played uh, 84 with Gary Zimmerman, um, Coach Don Pelham, Elliot Dunning, he used to play for the Ducks. Um, he played DB. Uh, I, I forget his coach, uh, probably Rich Brooks, but it was back in the day, 84, 85, because uh, I know because that was the year that I was born. And um, he played there. My mom, obviously, is the sister, uh, and she just bred Oregon, and you know. And ever since then, it's always been Oregon. I like Michigan, but Oregon came, came on top. So you grew up in the uh, Tustin and Santa Ana areas. So, you know, being a, a duck in the middle of Trojan country, did you take a lot of crap from your buddies for that? Um, a little bit. I, back when, actually, when I was in high school, I knew a lot of UCLA fans. Okay. So yeah, I, I got a lot of slack from UCLA fans. <laughs> but now that you know I'm back, you know, graduated, um, having fun, enjoying watching the ducks, continue the tradition that has been given to us since. Uh, the the Hay the Hayward days, um, it's it's just fun just talking a lot of smack, you know. Because <laughs> well, the the reality is some of those UCLA fans are probably now Duck fans. Oh yeah, yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's a trip because even though you get a whole lot of smack or uh, people that talk a lot of smack, you wear that Oregon Duck fan or that Oregon Duck shirt, and it just catches everyone's attention. And you know, that's just. Everyone wants to pick on a duck, but at the end of the day, we all know who you wins. You came in 2002. Oregon was fresh off finishing number two in the country, off winning the, the Fiesta Bowl. Um, and it was a big time of transition. That 2001 team had been very senior laden. Of course, Joey Harrington and Keenan Howard. But also in the secondary, there was Steve Smith and Rashad Bowman at cornerback. And 2002, everyone came in knowing they have to replace two seniors at cornerback. So there was opportunities for freshmen to play. Yeah, it was um, it was a lot of competition going in. Um, yeah, I, I felt like a stud coming out of high school. You know, the Ducks ranked number two in the nation. Uh, they just won the Tostitos Bowl. Or was it the Fiesta, the Fiesta Tostitos Bowl. Bowl. Or the Fiesta Bowl. There you go. And um, I was just, you know, just feeling myself and get there and, you know, find out that there's a whole lot of other good talent in the room that I have to compete with. And uh, I got hurt the year after. So mm. I was still, you know, I was still competing, but obviously I didn't win the job. Aaron Gibson won the job. Aaron Gibson was a phenomenal corner coming in. You know, had as you know, what people didn't see was that he was just so quick. You know, what teams did to him were they would just keep running streaks and running streaks and refill and run streaks again. But overall, it was it was a good year. Uh, we had, you know, Justin Fennessey was a good corner. Uh, was, actually, I think that year we, we just kept rotating every year. We had Sam Hughes. We had Justin Fennessey. We had Stephen Moore. Stephen. We had Aaron Gibson. And Bins all those and yeah, ends. Gilliam. Yes. So yeah, right. Yeah, Ryan Gilliam will coming in later a year, two later. But mm -hmm. that year, that particular year, it was just uh, a steady rotation. But it, it, you know, it was it was hard. But you know, you gotta you, you know you gotta learn off your mistakes. You gotta gotta become better the next year. You know, so right. Your 2002 year, you redshirted, and you were actually named Scott Player of the Week before the the USC game. Uh, you received a lot of awards for uh, your time spent on the scout team. And then 2003, you waited and waited and waited, and you didn't get your first playing experience until the Sun Bowl, the, the final game of the season. So how difficult was it for you to sit, you know, spend all that time working in 02 and then spend all the time working in 03 waiting until you, the very last game of the year you finally get a chance to go in? It was, it was pretty crazy because my first year I was recruited by uh, Coach Gilhammer. And um, 
after at the end of the year we went to we went to a bowl. I forget the bowl. Seattle. Bowl. The Seattle Bowl. They don't even have the Seattle Bowl now. Um, he ended up leaving. He ended up, I think, coaching at Louisville or something. And that's when Coach Neil came in. Uh, very first practice in pads of uh, spring ball, I broke my ankle. Um, so, you know, that took a while to heal. Um, it was just, it was just crazy. You know, I was frustrated because, uh, you know, I wanted to show the new coach, you know, that I can go out there and, you know, hit and, right. you know, run and, you know, do what I, you know, I was recruited by Oregon. So I wanted to show him, you know, what, what I can do. And, uh, and my ankle got broke and stayed out all year. Well, I probably wasn't cleared until maybe like the sixth or seventh game into the year. But, uh, you know, I was still, Still traveling with the team, you know, getting, you know, getting, you know, all the, acc not the accolades, but the things are getting used to what the team goes through when they're on, you know, when they're traveling, things like that. And then once I finally went in, in the, uh, in the bowl game, it was pretty, I had fun, but let's say the next year I regretted it because I had a chance to uh, either sit out or go or um, or play, and at the time um, our rover was uh, Marley Tucker, and um, I was backing him up on special teams at the time, and he was like, "Oh yeah, you know, go out, and, you know, and show him what you got." So you know, the person waiting, like you said, right. uh, all those games, putting in your work, practice, and you know, going on the field and seeing what's what's you know what's there to offer. Finally got in and you know had had a time of my life for those four plays and <laughs> at the end of the game i was like that was probably the i shouldn't have even did that move because not only did it i couldn't wretch you know get a medical red shirt right i just lost a, a, a big amount of playing time you know of, of exposure and things like that but you know i, I did have fun but <laughs> yeah it, it was it was kind of it was kind of weird it, it was it was just i don't know it was it was 50 50 you know it was best of both worlds catch 2020. well you'd waited a very long time to see the field <laughs> so it, it's understandable if you could be sitting there saying do i really have to sit around for another nine months and wait mm -hmm. before i can actually step on the turf I mean, yeah that on. was i remember because okay i went in there maybe you know give or take five or six plays but no more than seven i would say and all I can think about coming back home was I can't wait to watch myself in the film room on special teams because I've been wanting to do this forever. <laughs> but little did I know, a couple years later down the line, it, it hurt my chances of getting that medical red shirt. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's all good. Uh, are there any particular games that stand out to you as a personal favorite memory? Games or individual plays, maybe? Uh, games were... Actually, I could say two games the first game of course a michigan game if anyone's it was i think that was what put Oregon <laughs> on the map for since like what 2002 yeah. but that game was was an awesome game um the second game that comes to mind to me as of right now is the the, uh, the oklahoma game where obviously you know uh, we came back and won that was that was another big standout game where dennis dixon just just brought us back. I think we were down by seven, six or seven points, and fourteen. We, we were, yeah, four or fourteen, and we were running against court. time. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm over here. My knowledge is going is going back. <laughs> but yeah, we we were. I remember we were down when we were. It was just a, a race against time, really, to get or uh, to to pull it off and win. And you know, we did. How about uh, a uh, personal uh, favorite experience from your your playing days? Do you have <laughs> maybe a tackle that stands out, or a knockdown, or something? Um, played Stanford. It was crazy because, uh, you know, I wasn't. I was. I was playing safety at the time, and uh, JD was hurt. He got hurt, and I was just, you know, I was just standing by coach, but I didn't have my helmet with me. My helmet was somewhere on the sidelines, and uh, <laughs> they were like, "JD's down," and I was like, "Oh shoot, where's my helmet? Where's my helmet?" And then I finally get my helmet, and I'm looking everywhere, and I'm like, "Oh, I don't have a mouthpiece. I don't. I don't have a mouthpiece." And I'm one of those precautious players that I always gotta have a mouthpiece when I go in every play, just because I feel like it makes me, you know, it used to make me hit harder. <laughs> so 
it was uh i didn't have my mouthpiece but you know we were playing cover two at the time and they just threw a seam and i broke it up uh and that was you know next play jd came back in but that was a you know there's a couple plays uh of course against the arizona game um we were playing u of a i was on special teams uh when aaron get when we blocked like four, four or five punts that game and Aaron Gibson blocked like three. You know, if Aaron Gibson wasn't there, my hand was right above his just to make sure. And uh, that was a that was actually a pretty fun game. Not you know, all games are fun, but that was the most fun game because they didn't know how to stop us. Mm -hmm. We were just we were just coming in, just blocking punts left and right, just being special. And uh, another game that stands out in my mind will probably be um, Washington State special teams just. Coming in and, you know, uh, I did play first row on the kickoff team. I'm on the kickoff return team. You know, I had to had to come down and clean the, or try to hit a couple big outside linebackers and linemen. And, you know, me, I'm only weighing, my playing <laughs> weight is like only 185. And I had to hit like people who were like 220, 230. And, you know, I cleaned up this one dude twice so <laughs> you know as of right now i know i got a couple more plays but right. in a little bit what's it like coming out of that tunnel with the crowd just going crazy following the the motorcycle the very first time my very first time coming out the tunnel was had the same exact feeling as my last time coming out the tunnel it's just crazy because you know not only the team obviously the team has to warm up so when you uh when you're out there warming up not a lot of you know the stadium is not filled yet and right. you know Hudson has a lot of consecutive sold out games <laughs> it's just ridiculous and you know you go in you go into the state you go into the locker room and when you come out you're just like basically it's like watching rudy you know when you watch rudy and you know he comes out of the notre dame tunnel and he just stares and just looks at everything and that's how it is when you're coming out of Austin Stadium, it's just, but you got to keep running because you will get ran over by something. <laughs> you. It's just like uh, the number one moment that sticks out of my mind that I have to tell you about is when we were playing the Beavers. That's when that's when Oregon started doing their the uh, the changing of the uniforms mm. because I think we came out in all green uniforms, yep. but underneath those uniforms we had the. Uh, the like the metal things yeah. on the shoulder pads yeah 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 and uh we went back in the tunnel we went back in the locker room and everyone thought we were just coming out in our green uniforms and when we broke out those uniforms man that stadium just jolted with energy it was just and that was you know that was the best best one of my best times coming out. well that well, that 05 that fog bowl game that everyone remembers yeah the fog or or Oregon State. um you mentioned the fact that everyone changed uniforms in the locker room, and certainly it did shock everyone. Um, but the question that's never really been asked is, you know, those uniforms are pretty tight fitting. So, how how much of a pain in the butt was it to take the outer uniform off? Woo. Like like how 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 long were guys struggling to actually get the old one off to to have the new one on? Well, you know, the people that sweat profusely, man, they. Just like you did, str struggling all over the you, you had like like let's just say like you had a lineman, you had at least four or five guys pulling off that that first jersey. And then, you know, and not you know, not to mention you you know, when you pull off it's like pulling off a t shirt a shirt and your t shirt's gonna come up with it. So obviously the other jersey's gonna come up with it. So you have you have like three other guys pulling <laughs> excuse me, holding the others holding the other jersey. It was crazy. But like how, was, how long did it take to actually just? You how remember, long did it take for like, the line? Like, say, like rather than like doing like the pregame prep, mm -hmm. you know the, the typical pep talk and going over last minute plans, and instead you're spending how many minutes just trying to rip the jerseys off of everybody? Man, I I would say we had it took us probably a good thirty, no, about <laughs> twenty minutes, twenty minutes oh, just man. because we I remember we had to. Uh, we had to cut time down on our, you know, on our warm-ups before the games just because the jerseys are so tight, you know. <laughs> What's the thing that you miss most about Eugene that you wish you could find down here in L.A.? Is there like a maybe a favorite food or something you always have to go get? Oh, yeah. That's for sure. It's Hawaiian time. Man, yep. and, yeah, <laughs> it's Hawaiian time. It's, 
I don't know what's what there is about it, but last time I went up to Hawaiian time, I actually got to speak to the founder of it. I was in Portland and I was like, man, there has to be a way that we bring <laughs> Hawaiian time down to I because you got to have a good location for it. Right. So I told him, let's bring it down Huntington Beach. <laughs> you guys, well, you, you know, of course, it's under your name. But let me just own it. You right. know, let me just own it. You know, California has a lot of different like Chinese food places, a lot of Hawaiian eatery spots. But for some reason, nothing I, that tastes like Hawaiian time, though. Nothing tastes like Hawaiian time. Same, so, same thing with Carta Frisco. You can't find anything that tastes like Carta Frisco. So as soon as I get in town, straight for the cart, man. Straight for the cart. <laughs> I feel you on that. It's man, Hawaiian time. Uh, also, is it's what I love is the jail. The gel is pretty delicious. You get a lot for your for your five dollars. You, you know, it's not not too much you can get out in California for, for five dollars. <laughs> Especially that's you know that's good food. You know, you go to McDonald's or something. But the gel and Hawaiian time, those are the two things. If if, if I'm gonna be in Eugene for a week, I'm eating those two every other day. <laughs> well. <laughs> You know, heads up to Eugene businesses. We'll we'll trade you an In and Out Burger from LA for uh, a Carta Frisco and a Hawaiian time down here. For real. Well, Paris Moore, thank you so much for being a duck. Thank mm -hmm. you for continuing to uh, not only be a passionate fan, but to spread you the knowledge that you gained in Eugene to the youth down here in California. Hopefully, seeding some future ducks. And uh, best of luck in all future endeavors, man. Oh man, thank you, man. Go Appreciate ducks. it. Go ducks.